Washington, D.C. is a hyper-political town, not a news bulletin. So it tends to absorb information internationally, sometimes in personal ways. So there was a lot of chatter this week that when OPEC Plus decided and announced it was cutting production, that that was against President Biden specifically. Do you agree with that or do you think it's a broader OPEC Plus declaration about the direction of the global economy? So first, it does hurt the U.S. and we've seen oil prices go up above $90 a barrel. What does that mean? It means that inflation which has been coming down, now risks going up again. So that, that is not good for us. However, that it came as a surprise, it didn't come as a surprise to me, OPEC is looking to protect oil prices in the context of declining global demand. All three major areas in the world, China, Europe, and the U.S. are slowing much faster, which means less demand for oil. So what does OPEC do? They cut back supply. So this shouldn't have come as a big surprise. That's what they do. That's their history. But it's certainly not good news for the U.S. economy. OPEC, an article from Reuters. U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen added her voice to the members of Biden's administration sounding off against the oil production cuts announced by OPEC Group. Quote, unhelpful and unwise. For the global economy, particularly emerging markets, already struggling with high energy prices, according to Financial Times. Let me translate, guys. It's unhelpful and unwise to their narrative. While they have been bullying OPEC and all fossil fuels to push forward their green agenda and their, quote, alternative energy get it that doesn't exist to 100 percent yet the infrastructure cannot sustain their narrative makes no sense and since they have created the economy and are not oil or fossil fuel friendly as a capitalist why would they deal with unfriendly people when the east is in dire straits and definitely in need after the north stream situation but i digress let's continue Biden's administration has been loudly critical of the decision by oil cartel which took the step in defiance of the u.s pressure to keep global oil prices down again it doesn't fit their narrative at least they could have done this after midterms which is what biden wanted let's be real because these democrats really think the american people are dumb president biden has even used a third of our strategic oil reserves that trump filled in his term to keep prices suppressed in hopes that people would think that he has everything under control in order to rob you of your vote this november but god don't like ugly and the truth is plastered all over the economy and all his failed policies article from bloomberg next says the u.s economy may be edging closer to a completely unnecessary recession says popular economist mohammed al Arian. quote the probability of a recession is is uncomfortably high and it's tragic because it didn't need to be this way. It does hurt the U.S. and we've seen oil prices go up above $90 a barrel. What does that mean? It means that inflation, which has been coming down, now risks going up again. So that is not good for the U.S. However, that it came as a surprise, it didn't come as a surprise to me. OPEC is looking to protect oil prices in the context of declining global demand. All three major areas in the world, China, Europe, and the U.S., are slowing much faster which means less demand for oil so what does opec do they cut back supply so this shouldn't have come as a surprise that's what they do that's the history but it is certainly not good news for the u.s economy well spoken mr l arian so guys let's see some action editor roll clip fair use Saudi Arabian Ministry of Foreign Affairs, they issued a very lengthy statement in response to Biden saying he would reassess America's relationship with the kingdom after OPEC announced their massive oil production cut uh, and the Saudis, well, they had some thoughts on Joe Biden. Now, first, they accused him of lying about their motivations for the production cut. Then they say that he wanted the Saudis and OPEC, and also that now includes Russia, to delay their announcement and their cut by one month. This is what they wrote, quote, postponing the OPEC plus Russia decision for a month, according to what has been suggested, meaning requested by Biden, would have had negative economic consequences. Next, they put Biden on notice that they're not going to be listening to any of his, quote, dictates, actions, or efforts to distort their work on setting oil prices. And if that's not humiliating and bad enough, the Saudis had some parting words for Biden. 
we are not friends. The kingdom affirms that it views its relationship with the United States of America as a strategic one that serves the common interests of both countries. Wow. Your Royal Highness, I want to kick off by asking you specifically um, a question that I asked of Vladimir Putin a year ago. Are you using energy as a weapon? It was a question that he denied, but there are people in Washington and in the White House who right now are looking at the cuts that OPEC Plus is making, and they are saying that this is an aggressive move. And Mr. Secretary General, to follow on to that, when I spoke to you just a couple of months ago, you said you had an open door policy to European policymakers. Have they entered that door? Are you having those conversations with them? Uh, <laughs> question, which I, 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 you know, I take pleasure of answering uh, Hadi uh, with a, a quick, not a big answer. Show me where is the act of belligerence, period. Secretary General. Your Royal Highness, um, and back to your question, yes, I did say we have an open door. We have an open door. I'm waiting for someone to knock on that door. That's all I can say. And you're still not getting anyone knocking on that door? Because a lot of folks would say that by this action, you, by these cuts, you, you, you are endangering global energy markets, you are endangering the global economy. What's the response there, sirs? If you permit me, Royal Highness, we are not endangering the energy markets. We are providing security, stability to the energy markets. Out of price. Uh, everything has a price. Energy security has a price as well. OPEC Plus closing in on a deal to cut output by two million barrels a day, drawing pushback from Washington as Democrats look to tame pump prices going into the midterms. Bloomberg's Julian Lee now in London alongside Anne-Marie down in D.C. for more. Let's get to you, Julian. Just what on earth is happening in Vienna? Um, I, well, I think what it is is producers don't like the way the oil market is, is looking and the way that it's moving. Um, they were very concerned by uh, oil prices below $80 a barrel. Uh, they want something that's much closer to $100, and they're acting to get it. The one thing that I would point out is that this 2 million barrel a day uh, headline cut is in their target. It's a cut in the target. The actual reduction in production that that will probably lead to is much closer to eight, 880, 900,000 barrels a day because so <coughs> many of them are, are well short of their target levels anyway. And Marie, do you think that brings any comfort to the White House? Well, that's exactly what does bring comfort to the White House, Jonathan, the fact that this isn't 2 million barrels a day coming off the physical market, which means there could be a spike in the price, but potentially then it'll settle down, which is why I'd say the White House is not so much in panic mode, but they're probably a bit annoyed at the fact that the optics of this and the timing is not ideal at all. So when you look at the timing of this, in five weeks from now, Jonathan, you're going to be sitting next to me here in Washington, D.C. We're going to be talking about the midterm elections and potentially what many would call referendum on the presidency, this does not bode well for the White House five weeks out from the midterm elections. And on top of that, the optics of this are also discouraging for the administration with the fact that you have a newly sanctioned Russian official. He is the head of OPEC plus diplomacy out of Russia, the deputy prime minister, Alexander Novak, physically in Vienna. He'll be sitting side by side with Prince Abdulaziz, which arguably the Saudis are the United States' strongest ally in the Gulf. So the timing and the optics of it is what is very uh, discouraging for this White House, not so much that potentially this might not move the market. A dire economic outlook from the man in charge of one of America's big banks. If I was out there, I'd be very cautious. Jamie Dimon, CEO at J.P. Morgan Chase, is warning a recession is likely in six to nine months. On Wall Street, the S&P is down nearly 25% from January. And Diamond says another 20% drop is possible. It could be another easy 20%. And, uh, I, you know, I think, like, the next 20% will be much more painful than the first. High inflation has forced the Federal Reserve to raise interest rates, boosting the cost of borrowing in hopes of slowing down the economy. One sign the strategy could be working? Orders shipped from warehouses to retailers are down 33% since last year, and job growth could soon be stalling. Bank of America now expects the workforce could lose about 175,000 jobs per month beginning in January. 
Meanwhile, gas prices are steadily rising, now averaging $3.92 a gallon nationwide, up 20 cents from a month ago. And they're on track to top $4 after OPEC Plus, a group of oil producing nations led by Russia and Saudi Arabia, said it's cutting production by 2 million barrels per day to boost prices. Hey guys, this is Jose, your regular Joe Blow again, keeping an eye out and my ears open. Here we go, up the roller coaster, guys, and two years to go. It is not looking good yet for the economy. Everywhere we turn, more trouble, national and international. Thank God we have been budgeting, cutting back, and holding cash, getting out of debt, and pricing this in to our expenses. That's my wish for all of you guys. But you guys always know, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. Do your research. Everyone's financials are different. Plus, as I said, I'm not a professional. All I can continue to do is shine the light and bring you my best as fast as possible. I would love to take this time, guys, to thank you guys for your continued support. Stay free. It ain't hard to tell. I accept.